This video is going to be about 727 explosions. How it happens, why it happens, and how to protect yourself from, from it happening to you. There's going to be a lot of great information in this video, so make sure you stay and watch the whole video. If you're a Mopar guy, make sure you share this video with your friends. If you're a racer or a performance enthusiast and you run a 727, this is going to be some great information and you're going to learn a lot on how 727s explode. I'm John Culp and welcome to the CRT channel. 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 I want to welcome everybody to the CRT channel. Welcome to the CRT channel. You are known in the airport. Let's rip that rock. Keep on saying no sun. Let's go. Let's go to our mobile. Welcome to the CRT you know 727s um, has always got a bad rap because uh, of what could happen in first gear uh, when the transmission explodes I want to go through every single detail as I can as best as I can to educate you guys of what happens, how it happens, why it happens, and what you can do so it doesn't happen to you. So um, there can be no goofing around in this video. I'm taking this very serious. And um, I'm going to show you guys a couple clips, I'll show you a clip or two of an actual transmission explosion with a few pictures and um, I'm going to show you what what happens and then I'm going to explain to you how it happens when you're behind the wheel what happens check it out
some pretty scary stuff, ain't it? Yeah, uh, explosions are no laughing matter. Um, this is how it happens. And it always happens in first gear, and most of the time it happens at a dead stop. There's there's two thing there's there's two things that have to happen before the transmission explodes. The first thing is the sprag, one way or another, has to be shocked. Um, the sprag holds in first gear and free wheels in second and third. And for an automatic transmission to work, you have to, or at least for a three-speed torque flight, you have to have three components for it to work. You have to have something that's doing the driving, which is power in. You have to have something that's doing the holding. And then you have to have something that's doing, that, that's being driven. So power in, holding, and power out. You take away that scenario, you take away one of those three, the transmission's not going to work. But unfortunately, when you take away the holding, and in this case is the sprag, um, the transmission explodes. And later in this video, I'm going to show you a, on, a, on a gear set out on the, uh, I took a gear set and put it on the lathe, and I'm going to show you exactly what happens. So make sure you stick around for that. But the scenario is this. If the sprag is shocked, it could fail. And it could fail in, in, for multiple different reasons, for, for, for multiple different ways it could be shocked. The sprag could, you, you could have a drive shaft fail, fall out, and that could damage the sprag. You could have a ring and pinion fail or an axle that can damage the sprag. You can have tire shake that can damage the sprag. You could be stupid enough and don't ever do this. Neutral drop your transmission. That can um, wipe out the sprag. When the sprag fails, the transmission will go into free rev. The power no longer is going out to the output shaft. It's contained with inside the transmission and it spins and the front drum comes apart. So a lot of times the scenario could happen a week later. So I'll give you I'll give you a scenario. Um, regular bracket car or whatever, and the guy blows the rear end at the racetrack and he wipes it out. And if it happens in first gear, it's, you're going to take the sprag out. But let's let's say he blows the spider gears clean out of it, and now the, the car doesn't move. The car is taken back to the shop. Or wherever they put a new rear end in there, they put everything back together, they put the car in the trailer, they go to the racetrack. First pass, if the sprag is damaged, the transmission is going to explode if you don't have a bill of drum. So it, the scenario could be far apart. It doesn't have to happen on the same day. Um, if you take the tires and spin them at a high rate of speed, and they go from spinning real fast to a hook or a dead hook, that will break the sprag. It, you will shock the sprag with, you, it, it can happen multiple different ways. So what starts the domino effect is the sprag being shocked. So um, there's ways to improve that. And everybody's like, put a bolt and sprag in. And quite honestly, you're getting a, a little bit of a false sense of security by just putting a bolt and sprag in. This is one of my drag sprags, and it is a bolt and sprag. And um, this outer cam is just pressed into the case from the factory, and that's how it sits in there. So um, they now have, they bolt and sprag has been around forever. You drill holes into that and you physically bolt this into the case to keep this from spinning. The only problem is um, it's usually that's not what fails. The failure is not the cam spinning in the case. The failure are all these springs and rollers. So 
I mean, it is a good idea to put a bolt and sprag in, but that's not the fix all of it. The it's the spring and rollers that fails. I, I of all the bolt and sprags I've taken out, I've I've I've, I've never seen the bolts fail, or, and or I'm I should say, of all the sprag failures I've seen. The cam will rotate in the case and the case will pop, but that's only because the damage from the spring rollers has already taken that out. These spring rollers get wadded up and then it expands and then it takes the outer cam with it. I have a low reverse drum here. And remember, you need three things for a transmission to work. Power in, a holding device, and power out. This is a low reverse drum with a sprag in it. And the sprag and the drum spin, and the sprag is freewheeling, and then it locks in first gear. The low band apply is um, when you have the band that is turned on around the outside of the drum. So now you have two holding devices. You have the sprag and the band. So low band apply will help you um, prevent sprag failures. But if you can break a sprag, I mean, the band, the, the, the band should stop it. The span, if you did break a sprag, I've seen low band apply, people with low band apply break sprags, and I've already had two people break my drag sprag with 16 rollers. It, it's a mechanical piece. It's one way or another, no matter how strong you build it, you're going to find someone who's going to break it. So, the low band apply is a great feature, and I don't build valve bodies without it. You cannot get a valve body from me, and it's been like that from day one. You can't get a valve body from me without the low band apply. The low band goes around the drum, the drum goes in the sprag, so now you have two holding devices in first gear. That helps protect the sprag. Because remember, when the sprag fails, the front drum comes apart. We in the transmission industry, tell everybody that you should do your burnouts and in the water box, starting off in second gear and going to third. Just so you don't accidentally get the wheel spinning in the water box and then hook up and then it dead hooks. Now if you're on the street and you have an automatic shift valve body um, or a reverse manual valve body, you're going to have to start your burnout in first gear. You're not going to be able to get the tires to spin in first gear. Not only that, we're all we're all at the you know on the street farting around, boiling the tires in first gear. Everything I have has a bell drum. Everything uh, that prevents that. So worst case scenario, if I did screw up um, and broke a sprag, I would just end up with a bro uh, broken sprag. So on the street, the burnout procedure is let it rip. Um, if you have a reverse manual valve body and you do get it going in first gear, the sooner you shift in a second, um, the, the better you'll be because the sprag cannot fail in second gear. It cannot fail in third gear. It can only fail in first gear. And that's why the torque flights always blow up in first gear. Unlike turbo 400s that blow up on the big end going through the finish line when they let off the throttle or simply by just shutting the ignition off. So, this is not a torque flight thing. Any transmission can blow up. C6s, turbo 400s, stock drums were never designed by the manufacturer to spin at such a high rate of speed that that transmissions are being spun up now. So, it's not just a torque flight thing. Any transmission can blow up when you run stock drums. So, you get on the internet and you're like, oh, what can I do to make my 727 strong or whatever? You're going to have those. Put a 400 in it, my 400 won't blow up, which is bullshit, because it will and it can if you have stock drums. It's the stock drum that's what comes apart. Once you put a bill of drum in it, it doesn't happen. It's a $700 part. It's no different than having a cage. It's there for a reason. If you roll a car, you want to walk away from it. If you blow up a transmission, or I should say, if you if you if your sprag fails, and you have a billet drum, the transmission is not going to come apart. Your worst case scenario is you're going to have a broken sprag. So, um, I'm going to now take you to 
the lathe where I got a gear set set up and I'm going to show you how everything spins and show you the power in the power out and what's holding and what happens when the sprag fails. All right, what I did was I took a set of uh, planetary gears. I have the front annulus, the front planetary, the sun gear and shell, the rear planetary, and the rear annulus along with an output shaft. And I put mark markings on them so you can see the rotation in, in the camera. Now don't forget, in order for a transmission to work, you have to have um, power in or what's what's the drive source so that would be your input shaft you have to have power out which is or what's being driven and that is that you're going to be in this case the output shaft and then you have to have a holding device in first gear the sprag holds um, if you have low band applied which you should the sprag and the band holds in second gear the front band holds and in third gear the direct clutch or the front clutch holds so I'm going to simulate and go through to you and show you just exactly what the gear the gear train is doing and um, just to, so you have an idea of what's going on inside the, inside the transmission when the transmission explodes now I don't have the the, the rear drum and input shaft or the direct drum, which is also called the forward drum, uh, attached to this because I need to spin it. So just remember, connected to the sun shell is the front drum, which is not here. And the front drum is actually the piece that explodes. It's the part that does the, the damage. It, it's what comes apart. And just remember that that front drum is connected to the sun shell. The, the power in, remember there's three things you need, power in, power out, and some holding. The power in is also not in this picture. I'm going to simulate that with my hand. So imagine my hand is the input shaft with the, 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 the front clutch or the forward clutches. I said that wrong, not the front clutch. It's the rear clutch which applies the forward clutches depending on what you call it. So I'm going to go through the gear ratios on this. And, and show you what the gear set inside the transmission is doing when you're driving your car. So remember, my hand is the input shaft and the engine spins clockwise. So I'm gonna spin the front annulus um, clockwise. That's gonna be my drive. That's gonna be the power in. The power out's gonna be the output shaft and I'm gonna use my left hand to hold the rear planetary which is normally splined through these lugs to the lower verse drum the lower verse drum is splined to the sprag so my hand is going to simulate the sprag holding okay so i'm holding the planetary i'm spinning the front annulus clockwise because that's the rotation in the engine. And you can see that the output shaft is spinning clockwise, which is forward gear. The sun shell is spinning counterclockwise. Now remember, this sun shell is connected to the direct drum or the forward, or, or, I gotta say this right. Remember, the sun shell is connected to the front drum. In second gear, the second gear band, the front band comes on and that, uh, that band is on the front drum. The front drum is splined to the sun shell. So I'm gonna now use my holding device and hold the sun shell and spin the front annulus. So now in third gear, the band shuts off and the, the front clutch comes on. The front clutch is splined to the sun shell so all this spins together. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. Third gear is one-to-one. -one. Notice that the output shaft is spinning clockwise. Now to get reverse, the, the rear clutch is not on, but it's still spinning because it's flying to the, 
torque converter. So when it spins, the front clutch comes on and applies the sun shell. No, it applies the front clutch, which is connected to the sun shell. So also the low reverse band is on. So as you see, the, the output shaft is now going in the opposite direction. That is reverse. Reverse gear ratio is 2.20. When the sprag fails, you're missing a part. So um, remember, you need three things. You need, you need input, or what's being driven, what's, what's doing the driving. We need a device that's holding, and we need something that's being driven. You need those three things for our transmission to work. So if your output shaft breaks, you still have your input, you still have your holding, but it's not gonna move the car because the output shaft ain't broke. Same if you lose your input. If you strip a planetary, you break an input shaft, of course there's nothing coming in and nothing's gonna spin. The same goes for if you lose your holding device. In second gear, the band's doing the holding and it holds the, sun, the, the front drum and you get second gear ratio. If the band strut breaks or the band snaps or whatever the scenario may be, you lose the holding. You need three things. Power in, holding device, and power out. I'm stressing that because you have to remember, um, I want that to be in your brain. Power in, a holding device, power out. Or something that's doing the driving, something that's doing the holding, and something that's being driven. You have to have those three things in order for the planetary gear set or the transmission to do its job. So now, what happens when the sprag fails? This is what happens. Remember, my hand is the sprag. I'm going to hold the, the rear planetary, which is splined through these lugs to the low reverse drum. On the back of the low reverse drum, it's splined to the sprag. So the sprag is on, the input shaft is spinning the, the, the front annulus, and you're getting first gear ratio. When, you're spin, when the input shaft is spinning the planetary system, or when the input shaft is spinning the front annulus clockwise, you can see that the sun shell is going counterclockwise. The output shaft is going clockwise. So your power source coming in, this is your holding device, and then the output shaft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let go of this sprag, which is my hand, that's normally holding the, the low reverse or the rear servo. I want you to watch what the output shaft does. Ready? It is now, when you take away that holding device, it, it, is, it is not transferring the power to the output shaft. Now once I hold it again, then the power goes through and it transfers to the output shaft. But when the sprag fails, it no longer submits the power to the output shaft. I mean, it's barely turning, but with the weight of the car, that output shaft will not turn. And then the front drum, which is connected to the sun shell, is, goes into a free rev. That front drum is going to spin two and a half times the engine RPM. If your input shaft connected to the, to the torque converter, connected to the engine, is pretty close to engine RPM. So at 5,000 RPMs, let's say the sprag pops, okay? You're not gonna get your foot off the throttle quick enough before this goes under free rev. Once it goes under free rev, it's been at two and a half times the RPM of the engine. So five grand, that's 12,000 RPMs. The front drum will literally come apart at 9,000. So that's how it happens. Instead of transforming, trans, instead of it taking the power through your holding device, which is your sprag, 
when the sprag fails, the power no longer is going out to the transmission, but the power is still coming into the transmission and it's being multiplied through a gear ratio. This low gear or this gear set, that front drum, you can just see how fast that front that sun shell is spinning and that it's not transferring to the output shaft. That's what the gear set's doing when you break a sprag. And that's how the front drum spins at an uncontrolled rate. And that drum was never intended to spin that high. In 1961 or 1962 and 62 when Chrysler was developing this, that wasn't something they were, the engineers were not saying, okay, well, what's gonna happen when the Sprague fails? And let's make the drum out of better material. It was a passenger car transmission. It was really never designed. I mean, they beefed it up, but it was really never designed to take that RPM. The transmission gets a bad rap because of it, but, you know, that's just what happens. So now I'm gonna go back to the build room and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the drums, the billet drums and whatnot. So I hope you guys understand this. Let's go to the build room. I know a lot of people run carbon fiber shields. They fit really nice and they are, um, they're not a oil soaked rag like a trans blanket. But as you see in these pictures, if you have a stock drum, which you shouldn't, if you're racing, you should have a billet drum. But if you have a stock drum and you have one of those carbon fiber shields, there's a very good chance that the, the drum will make it out the shield. And it, it, as you can see by this one, it will not only did it go out the shield through the floor, it went out the door. So um, I, it is my opinion that a carbon fiber shield will not contain a transmission explosion. Uh, neither will those aluminum shields that you see. The only thing that will contain it is a blanket. And you have to have the blanket um, at least mid-bell and back. Um, but I'm hoping that anybody that races their car or has some good power um, doesn't have a stock drum. And... You, you got to have the, the four scenarios that I say to completely protect yourself is a 16 element drag sprag, a valve body with low band apply, the billet steel drum, and that's the big one, and some kind of a so, some kind of safety safety shield. If you have a billet drum, low band apply, and a bolt-in sprag, or a 16 roller bolt-in sprag, um, then you can run the CSR shield. Um, because most, because the chances of you ever exploding a transmission with a billet drum are nil. No. If you did take out a sprag um, and you did over rev the snot out of the motor and the transmission went into a free rev, some billet drums would just distort. 
other billet drums, there's different grades of billet out there. Um, most all the ones today are, are, are the good grade. I don't know it off the top of my head. And they'll withstand an explosion and you can reuse the drum. So if you take the transmission apart, you find, okay, the sprag failed. You can put the drum in the lathe, measure it, make sure it's good and reuse it. So you, you need those four things. You need a 16 roller sprag, you need low band apply, you need the billet drum and some kind of a, a shield. You have to have the shield anyways uh, if you race at any section track. So those, those are the four things you have to have. Um, transmission explosions are, um, are scary. I've only had one of all the years that I've been doing transmissions. I've only had one transmission explode. And it was mine. It was in my coronet. I was uh, a young punk kid uh, street racing on the street and this was way before there were Bella drums. Um, they, there were blankets but I didn't have one on the car. Um, I didn't have a Bella drum and I had a valve body that didn't have low band apply which are still being made today that you can still get that cheetah valve body and it still comes with no low, low band apply and I had a I was I what was a 1989 I think it was and um in Cal City bop you know doing some testing before I took the car to the track and it, it was a driver error of my own um I had the stock shifter in it and I took out the gate so I could shift it easily from first to second without pushing the button and I was in first gear uh, warm the tires up to do like a little test hit and with my foot into it I exit when I went to go grab the shifter I accidentally knocked it in a neutral and I freaked out and I pulled it back in the gear instead of letting off and aborting the pass it was a bad mistake on my end uh, I was just a kid. I was dumb, stupid. Then, so, I put it in first gear. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this again. I put it to the wood, and it popped. The, the car did not move. The, when the transmission exploded, and I've seen this on multiple people that were walking my shop with a cast on their leg, and they show me pictures. When the front drum explodes, it always goes towards the driver. Um, I mean, you've seen that picture where it went out the passenger side door. But I've seen multiple times, I mean almost every time, that that comes to the driver. The, the floor puffs up about like six or seven inches. Mine, it ripped a, a hole in it about almost a foot long. It moved the gas pedal and this is the brake pedal, it moved the floor of the gas pedal to where the gas pedal was now on top of the brake pedal. It, it crushed the steering column. I had bits and pieces poking up through the cowl, which you can still see if you're ever in my shop, and you, I'll still show you those explosions from the 80s. Um, and I got hurt, I, I had to go to the hospital. But not only that, because I had headers and transmission fluid was everywhere, it caught on fire. Um, so in these videos, when you see the fire, that's the transmission fluid exploding. Um, or that's the transmission fluid going up in flames. So, man, it, it not only could you can get hurt in multiple different ways. Um, and I did. I, I had my foot broke in three spots. And I had two of my toes because I had uh, gym shoes on. I had shrapnel go through two of my toes and kind of mangled them pretty good. Um, when I jumped, when it when I exploded my tranny, uh, I was there with a couple friends of mine, and you know I was still in shock. I was like, you know, tr I was still on both my feet. I was still walking around. I jumped out of the car. I jumped out of the car without shutting it off because the inside was engulfed with flames. 
And I didn't have a fire jacket on. I didn't have a helmet on. I had no no fire equipment whatsoever. It was a street car. Um, so when it exploded, I jumped out of the door and I never shut the, the car off. And it was just barely rolling like a mile an hour. So I went in there and I shut it off and we're all looking inside and the floor is mangled and there's transmission fluid and whatnot. The fire put itself out. I remember one of my buddies saying, look at you got fluid all over your foot on your gym shoe. And I looked and then I just start for whatever reason, I wiggled my feet, my toes and I go, that's not trans fluid. I go, that's blood. So I took my shoe and my sock off and I saw, I was like, what the heck? It was nasty. So I put my shoe and sock back on and they rushed me to the hospital. Um, Nikki went back and towed my car back to the shop. So I'm at the hospital and uh, the doctors keep on walking back and forth in and out of the room. And I'm like, what's going on here? They're like, did you shoot yourself? I'm like, does it look like I shot myself? We don't know how you did this. And I try to explain to them their transmission exploded in my car. Well, they couldn't comprehend that. They wanted to call the police. They wanted to file a report. I'm like, listen, man, I'm in terrible, terrible pain. I go, could you just fix me up and ask the questions later? So they kind of dropped that. And then they kept on walking back and forth in the, in the room. I'm like, what the hell? I go, now what? He goes, well, we don't know if we can save your toes. I'm like, well, if you can't, cut them off because I don't want to come back here in six months and have to, you have to take my foot off the angle because of gangrene. So they did. I had some stitches on two of my toes. I had to wear a cast. I actually, if you know me long enough, I went to Mopar Nationals on crutches and a cast. Um, I think that was 90 when all this went down. Was it 90? I don't remember. 89, 90. So I know firsthand... Um, what a transmission explosion can do and it I could have got really really hurt you know I, I and I've got multiple multiple stories of customers have walked in my shop with their transmission in a box and it's a gazillion pieces They're like John how did this happen so I'm hoping that this video gets around to everybody um, and uh, to be safe you know you put a drum in it boom you're good to go if anything if, if you didn't have money for the sprag the low band apply the shield or anything if you had to pick one part out of the four even though i recommend you get all four you at least get the billet drum because that's what explodes you know if you take out a sprag boom you need a case you need a sprag you'll live to, to race another day but it's the drum is the piece that explodes because the sprag fails because of shocking the sprag in first gear so i'm going to edit this video and um i'm going to make sure that i hit all the spots and if i have to update it i'm going to so please like this video share this video tell your mopar friends about this video um, it's not a laughing matter. I, I, I take this scenario pretty seriously, as you should too. Um, protect yourselves, get the drum, and uh, be safe. So, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let everybody know about it. I'll catch you on the next one. I'm Mopar to you.